that they have no language. But they have a very limited number of things that they can say. Very limited indeed. We can say an indefinitely large number of different things. And the thing that differentiates us from the Vervet monkey is that we have grammar and they do not. You see, we do not have four different words to describe a sleeping lion, a running lion, a sleeping dog, and a running dog. We have a word for lion and a word for dog. We have a word for running. We have a word for sleeping. And by combining them together, we can increase enormously the number of possible things that we can say. If we have a thousand nouns and a thousand adjectives, then we can say a million things. Not just 2,000 things, which we would, would be the, all we could say if we didn't have the grammatical notion of predication. But of course, we have a lot more grammar than just the notion of a, a, a predication, let's say, of ascribing properties to, to objects. Um, we have highly complex grammatical skills, uh, universal skills, all human beings have them, and the the dramatic thing, to me at least, about grammatical skills, and the thing that makes me believe that they are in some sense genetically uh, programmed skills, is that in, in speaking we make use of rules of which we are unconscious and which we couldn't describe if we were asked. And, and let me, to persuade you, let, let, let me say two sentences to you. Um, how do you know what he had for dinner? What do you know how he had for dinner? The first sentence is, I hope you'll agree, grammatical. The second sentence, again, I hope you'll agree, is not. I suspect that unless you happen to be a trained linguist, and maybe not even then, you have no idea whatever what the rule is that tells you the first of those two sentences is grammatical and the second one isn't. You have no more idea how you talk grammatically than you do how you digested your dinner. Um, <laughs> you really don't um, and that makes me feel and there are other evidences as well of course that, 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 that this linguistic skill is something which required genetic evolution specific to humans not to cause us to speak English rather than French but to, speak, to, to, to enable us to learn the grammar of the language with which we were brought up I, I, I almost said that this was the last of the major transitions that have happened in our evolution but of course it isn't um, there have been two further major transitions in the way in which we transmit information between generations some 5,000 years ago we invented writing and having invented writing we could construct and live in immense complex societies with big cities and taxation systems and that kind of thing um, I mean I suppose really taxation is the most important consequence of writing <laughs> um, but even that is not quite the last revolution the last revolution I suppose is this this is a CD um, nowadays if you um, want to make horrible noise you don't buy one of these things uh, good old fashioned 78 you buy one of these um, this thing although much smaller contains as much information as about a hundred of those um, roughly um, in other words we are now storing information electronically not in bruise on wax we are transmitting it electronically and maybe the future lies with entities which transmit information electronically rather than otherwise. When I look at my two grandsons uh, playing Sonic Hedgehog on a computer, I wonder who is controlling whom. <laughs> you know, at first sight you might say the child is controlling the computer, it's pressing the buttons. And so indeed it is. But I think if a Martian were to look in and look at what was happening, he'd say that computer is controlling that child. But it doesn't seem to me to be wholly impossible that the future lies with reproducing, self-replicating entities which are trans transmitting information between generations not by DNA, not by, as I'm doing it now, by human language, but by electronic means. 
and that we shall either be their servants or be totally expunged if no longer strictly necessary. This is a bit alarmist, perhaps, but at the moment we are, in a sense, saved by the fact that this machinery, although it does carry information, although it transmits it, these machines are not self-replicating. They still do require us to build factories in which they're made. Um, they don't build their own factories. They're not completely taking over. It, maybe this is, is, is silly. I, I, it may well be. I don't have any doubt in my mind, however, that the impact of electronic storage of information, electronic transmission of information, is going to be as profound in as the other earlier transitions that I've talked about, the origin of replication itself, of molecular, molecular replication, the origin of the genetic code, the origin of sex, and so on, we are, privileged is perhaps not quite the word, we are in fact uh, living through a, a final revolution um, in the way that information is transmitted, stored, uh, uh, and encoded. And fortunately I don't have to tell you the results because I've been saved by the bell. <laughs>